Hello everyone, you're here at Stock Picks by Tim, and today I want to talk about Indie, as, as you can see here. So we're going to go over a few things in terms of SEC filings, some important stuff you got to keep, um, keep on your radar, be aware of. I'm also going to go over the list of suppliers that Indie supplies to. We all know that they're a tier one automotive supplier, and we're going to go into a little bit of details there. We're going to go over the executives, what their history is, uh, the companies that they used to be in before Indie and also some some of my few takeaways but let's get into this video i'm going to give you guys a few positives as well as a few negatives now first things first my friends i'm going to show you guys um investor presentation on indy's specific site i will leave you guys the link now i definitely recommend you guys if you haven't it's definitely good to just look over any company you're investing in look over the investor presentations find a few things that you weren't aware of and now we're going to go over a few of these companies here we've got tesla which is huge and actually shout out to kid wozy one if you're listening my friend thank you uh, shout out to him though for him or her for bringing up um, Tesla's actually gets their chips some of their chips from Indy although I've been trying to find any information on that besides just the company saying that I'm trying to find any information so if anyone has anything any links or anything leave it in the comments I'm sure everybody else would appreciate that as well but as you can see we are also supplier of Mercedes-Benz Geely which is a big Chinese brand BMW Audi Porsche Fiat Chrysler Volvo Nissan Ferrari Renault, Maserati, Lamborghini, Volkswagen, GM, Jaguar, Land Rover, Ford, Chevy, GMC, Cadillac, and Alfa Romeo. I think these are all relatively strong brands in my opinion. As you can see are just, you know, like top tier, very expensive car brands, luxury brands. Now when we're looking at their pipeline, electrification in terms of charging controllers and diagnostic solutions. And these are things that are still in development. FMC W LiDAR, which stands for Frequency Modulated Continuous Wave. And uh, currently, FMC W Radar exists, but not LiDAR. We've got AI accelerators, another thing they're working on. Driver monitoring systems, you know, in terms of checking, making sure the driver is aware, making sure the driver is awake, um, making sure, you know, that your, um, your blind spots are covered, sensors and things of that nature. We've got smartphone conditional access. In, um, in terms of that, I think they're talking about, um, I believe it's called car key, which is where you can use your phone as a key, essentially. So Indy is working on that, probably from the automotive perspective, as in the vehicle being able to accept that phone, connecting to it as in terms of unlocking doors um, and what have you. Now, check this out. We've got some big names here, and you can see that across the board we've got a few of the same companies and uh, check this note down here anything in a green circle so david king scott key phd ichiro aoki i got i mean i'm bet i'm betting on this guy i believe highly in this guy and this guy here director and president chairman and ceo donald mccloyman skyworks solutions cirrus logic axiom people everyone that has a green circle around their picture has worked together for over 20 years so we have a strong connection here we've got a strong connection we have axiom but yeah you see skyworks very awesome infineon is a a uh, it, it's in terms of like door locks and things like that i believe broadcom i need to probably do my research on that one i'll admit but as uh, you know you're looking at skyworks huge company cirrus logic another huge company so this is definitely keep this on your radar you know go to their investor presentation it's not a bad idea at all get familiar with the investor presentations get familiar with looking at the sec documents now before we get to the one thing i want you guys to keep note of and it has to do with the uh, share price another thing to keep um, on your radar which you could see this potentially as a negative now um, sales to aptive which is a leading tier one automotive supplier First, we go over 2019. Okay, so 2019, it was 77% of the total revenue. All right, and then we get into December 2020, and we're looking at 57% of the total revenue. Now, this that's a good sign there. Okay, but then when you look into 2021, March 2021, it's 61%. So it's it's been going up. Okay, it was nice to see it going down, but to see it going up, although this is a huge drop compared. So 2019 and 2020, we saw a nice drop in revenue to just Aptiv, you know, because if something were to fall through with Aptiv and they were to say cancel all the orders or just decide not to work together anymore, you know, it's going to be, it'll be 
very big hit on our revenue. Okay, so that's one thing to keep in mind. One thing that people could potentially see as a negative. So you want to keep an eye on this and look for when they are going to update us on this. You know, keep your eyes and ears open because if we see this keep increasing, uh, that could be seen as a negative sign. And here's another thing that's, uh, I think, quite important and also seen as a potential negative. We're talking about 8,625,000 shares of commons, okay? Or the, the agreement for this lockup was t August 8, 2019. And if we close at a price of $12 per share for 20 days out of 30, that lockup would end. And we're probably slowly approaching that 150 days. And we are also approaching $12 a share. Definitely be careful there. Pay attention to that $12 a share price. In my opinion, if I see it hit that price for long enough, I will probably consider taking profits. That's just my, um, my own decision, but it's totally up to all of you to make your own decisions on when to buy, when to sell. I'm just trying to give you guys a little bit of information to keep on your radar, be aware of. I know that people don't know this, that they supply to all these manufacturers. And the more people that actually see this, I think the more bullish they could be. So you've got your positives, you've got some negatives. The executives have a strong connection through Axiom. Um, you know, there's connections here with Caltech, Skyworks together. So they're definitely, um, you know, a lot of these CEOs have connections where, you know, one knows the other from a company they work together in. And Sirius Logic has actually been around since 1998. Well, right before the tech bubble here, it's, it's over time, it has been going quite nicely. And looking at Skyworks, we see the same thing. And it was a semiconductor company, so we definitely see, we definitely see that the CEO, the CFO, they're both involved with Skyworks. It is a semiconductor company, so you see that a lot of these guys here on the executive team are or were previously involved in semiconductors. And he does have quite a few of, um, a, quite a lot of patents. Now here's the uh, low distortion radio frequency limiter, power amplifiers, amplifier control, transformer power control techniques, a lot of things having to do with, um, you know, with radio systems and the like. Door opening, closing apparatuses. Interesting though, we've got some very smart people here with Indy, and I have no doubt that they are going to do very well here, I think. I think that Indy should do very great in the future coming up.